Welcome, friends. Welcome, everyone, to our Electroculture series with Yannick von Dorn. Today, we are a class lecture number five. We're going to be discussing circuits and spirals and the copper harmonizer. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, Yannick. Hello. Hello, everyone. So uh, next presentation about Lakowski oscillation circuits, Igina spirals, Fibonacci spirals, copper harmonizer. So all kinds of spirals that we can use in our gardens, uh, all very simple techniques uh, that we can do with uh, just a copper wire or aluminum wire or even uh, iron or galvanized steel wire. So uh, with uh, really easy to find materials and that can have uh, huge effects on our plants. So welcome to everybody. I'm very happy to be here and to share with you all that uh, knowledge and, and uh, experience and testimonials. So let's begin. Um, so here you see on this uh, first page image um, on the white uh, bottom, the Fibonacci spiral and uh, above it, uh, thunder strikes. Well, I, I, uh, to begin with an anecdote, I read in a, in a book, an old book about atmospheric antennas and electricity of the air. Uh, I speak about an old book around the 1800s uh, that, uh, or even, uh, yes, 1800s, that they, and in that book, they, they speak about even older knowledge uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the Middle Ages. And they were talking that uh, curvature, um, so uh, that, uh, that iron that is curved, uh, is, is a better antenna than a straight line uh, for electricity of the air. And they could see, they could, they could even predict uh, thunder strikes or a storm coming by looking at the curvature of, of iron and they could see the, the electricity uh, uh, coming out of the curvature. And it was more easy to see with the naked eye uh, on a curvature of of an uh, of a, of a steel or iron uh, um, uh, uh, wire than on a straight line of of the same uh, uh, iron. So that is very interesting because when we look at old old antennas on uh, churches, on temples, on uh, on. Uh, Fences, we see a lot of uh, spirals and curvatures of metals and those maybe are all kind of antennas that will uh, help to collect uh, electrical energy or a kind of electrical energy of, of our, uh, our environment. So uh, that's uh, an introduction uh, to, to the spirals where we have all curvatures uh, in all directions, <laughs> uh, but with certain rules. Uh, there are certain rules that are, uh, that, that, are, that are respected. We will begin first to speak about those uh, bracelets or those uh, Lakowski coils or antennas like we see on the left of the image and then we will speak also about those spirals like the igina spirals so spirals in the form of a cone uh, those are very powerful a lot more powerful than just a normal uh, spirals uh, or normal uh, coils uh, um, the the spirals in a cone like uh, luigi igina did uh, are really very powerful we will see that so we will talk again about the history, some scientific ideas and working principles, how to, how to install all those uh, kind of uh, antennas and some results that we, we can see very quickly results. Huh? If we do tests on germination of seeds, uh, it's, it's in one or two weeks, you can see already results. Huh? So it's, it's, it's quite, it's, it's very powerful. So on the, in the historical, historical timeline of electroculture, 
uh, we can find the research about George Lakowski with the Lakowski uh, coil or like the kind of bracelet. Uh, we can find that back around 1920s, 1930s. Uh, the spirals of Luigi Igina, those are from already from the beginning of the 1900s until now. Uh, Igina lived around more than 90 years old, and he was even a student or, or uh, a worker with uh, Marconi, the inventor of the radio. So he, he lived from beginning of the 1900s until uh, the beginning of the year 2000. So he, he was really uh, very old and he, he, he saw the whole century uh, passing by. <laughs> so uh, from the first uh, radios and phones until uh, the new uh, hour portable. So it's really uh, um, extraordinary. And um, and then we have also the Fibonacci coils or uh, spirals that we can find back in history uh, until very old times, because we find this back in fences and in, in uh, old structures all over the world also. So we will continue. Here you see some oscillation circuits you can find in museum, like uh, bracelets that are mostly in uh, copper, uh, gold, or silver. Now, in our gardens, uh, we will not use really uh, silver and gold. It would be quite expensive and would attract uh, parasites and thieves. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that's not what we want. So uh, with copper, we will... Uh, we will not attract those ones, so <laughs> we will have to grow the plants. It will be better. Um, so, but we see that in, in uh, those musea all over the world, because uh, it was a kind of knowledge that was known quite all over the world. We see it uh, uh, um, uh, at the old populations of Europe in the, uh, before uh, Jesus Christ. And but also in South America, in North America, in Asia, we, we have all kinds of bracelets. And in one, uh, in all the writings, we can find back even, but I have to find back again the, the exact source. But uh, I, I, I read somewhere that um, they were telling that they give those bracelets to, to the soldiers to become to be really strong and uh, healthy and um, and and very aware of, and with uh, with a uh, uh, with a clear consciousness huh? so to 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 be strong and uh, to be strong to be strong to survive and this is uh, also really what what we want for the plants uh, to be strong and uh, and to have the, the best energy so they, they knew already in the past times that uh, it helps to be strong, um, even if they didn't know the exact scientific uh, working principle like we know today, or like we have some uh, theories of George Lakowski about this. Uh, they, they knew already uh, that it was very powerful and easy to, to, to do. We see also that on the ends of the bracelets, we have like balls or like little coils or like uh, uh, bigger or, or like it's the, the thickness of the wire that is bigger. So this is uh, to increase the capacity. If we look at a uh, Lakowski coil in an electronic or uh, in the electrical theory perspective, then it is an RLC circuit. It's a, it's like a, a kind of radio circuit with a coil, but a coil with one loop, with only one loop. And at the end of the coils, we have the those balls or those uh, the wire that is thicker, and this creates a capacitor. It's like a reservoir of electrons it's like it will increase the electricity in the coil 
uh, and um, or the charge you could say and then uh, it's made of a highly conductive metal so like gold it's one of the most highly conductive metals or silver or uh, a copper and um, rlc and then you have the l is from the inductance because it's a coil and then you see in some of those coils that you have like a wire that is wrapped around another wire or that is like a, um, uh, so that it's to increase the that coil effect huh? it's to increase the inductance um, and uh, so and then you have uh, r is the is the resistance so here we have a very weak resistance because it's a metal so and when we have the the values of those three uh, uh, RLC, uh, then we can even calculate a we can even calculate a resonance frequency, and this frequency is like a radio frequency, like a, like we tune our radio to capture some uh, radio frequency, uh, some sound or uh, uh, a radio channel a radio channel well and then that radio frequency will make that we can capture even more subtle frequencies like on a radio channel and uh, and so it works like this uh, then you can understand also that as soon as you change one of those uh, values of rlc uh, well of the circuit it will change the resonant frequency of of the of the RLC circuit of the radio it's like a mini radio well uh, and that can also help to understand why certain sizes uh, or certain materials and uh, will change the frequency and so if we make uh, different coils of different sizes they will have uh, different uh, effects or or the, the the one can be a lot more powerful than the other because uh, the one will be a more optimum size than the other or the one maybe you make a coil for one plant and uh, it's a radio channel um, uh, I love plants uh, the plant will <laughs> will like it better than uh, uh, the radio channel i hate plants uh, <laughs> to make it simple so th there will always be an optimum and that can explain uh, why uh, why certain uh, will have really huge results with certain circuits and other less because uh, 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 a slight change of your circuit will change the frequency and so it will change the the intensity or the effect but uh, however we don't have really the the precise measurement tools to be able to measure what what will be the best size and what will be the best uh, uh, distance between the ends for example uh, because this will also change the frequency what will be the best thickness we we don't have uh, measurement devices for this so uh, we, we can only trust uh, what we see on the plans but what we see is that in most cases um, uh, most cases if you just respect certain basic rules you will have uh, good results uh, but just to know that uh, with certain circuits you will have better results than with other but in most cases you will always have good results i never saw bad results with this and um, so we will see uh, how to do the the in, in in the most simple expression it is just a copper uh, we, in in the most simple expression and in the practical way for our gardens we use just a copper wire, for example, that is in an open loop uh, that we put around the plants. So it's as simple as this. Uh, and and it's, you see that it's very, uh, very cheap to do. So 
that was the first experiments or the image that we see uh, all over internet and books and, and, and everywhere about th this technique because it's the first uh, image we have of the first experiment of George Lakowski um, with this technique. So uh, uh, he inspired uh, probably, uh, for sure, uh, of the old um, bracelets we find all over the world. Huh? Um, and then he tested if there was a scientific background or use uh, for this, if it has really effects on plants, for example, on living organism. And so he tested it on, um, on geranium plants. He inoculated uh, a row of geranium plants with uh, cancer, with a kind of uh, plant cancer. So it was inoculated on 4 December 1924, it is written. He made a copper loop that he positioned around one plant that you see in the middle. Uh, he put the opening on the north side in that case, and he put the loop like in an angle of 30 degrees. His idea was to optimize also with the earth magnetic field and to increase the effect um, because the orientation can also optimize like a radio antenna. The orientation will also increase the effect. And so in his idea, he thought uh, that it would be better to put the 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 open ends to the north and uh, the angle uh, like this around 30 degrees and um, you see that after after one month uh, or two months uh, because his beginning of the experience was beginning of december and two months later uh, end of January 1925, you see the result where uh, the plant with the circuit survived uh, the, the cancer inoculation and continued to grow like, uh, like he was healthy, like there was nothing uh, bad uh, happening. So, and all the other plants were like that, were that. Uh, so that's a huge difference. Huh? That is also interesting that if your plants are already healthy, you will not see really much uh, difference with uh, Lakowski coils. But if your plants had certain weaknesses or stress, then you can see huge effects uh, because it will really um, neutralize or, or, or help to increase the energy even in stress situations. Uh, so that is very interesting. Uh, now, almost all plants are in stress situations because we are stressed, uh, even if we consider a human as a plant, <laughs> we, we, are, we are all stressed by uh, electropollution, for example, while the plants do, uh, uh, and also maybe climate problems or um, if they have not enough uh, water or polluted water or, po or pollution, uh, any pollution will stress the plants too. Uh, so uh, with the Lakowski coil, it will help to relieve all those stresses and to increase the energy that they lose otherwise with the stress. You have one book that is really uh, very interesting to learn, to, to, to read, if we want to go more in depth in that uh, knowledge. It's uh, Cellular Oscillation from George Lakowski itself. Uh, I would advise to read really the books of the inventors themselves and not the uh, before the books of the people talking about the inventors <laughs> because uh, 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 when people talk about the inventors they have all their their own uh, interpretations and ideas and uh, it's not always uh, really right and um, when we read the books of the the real inventors or the first uh, experimenters 
we we understand better how they came to that id how they evolved uh, from one id to another and and uh, ah, in my eyes it's more interesting because it makes us understand better uh, the id behind it and how it works um mm -hmm. yeah so we continue ah uh Lakovsky, he tested with different materials, uh, that kind of uh, circuit. And he tested it also, like, for example, with uh, lead, uh, or yes, it's, it's lead, um, the uh, kind of metal. And, um, and with uh, lead, uh, the plants stay very little. So that's very interesting. Uh, because when a plant or an animal is uh, polluted, intoxicated with the lead, uh, then uh, it acts against their growth hormones. And for example, humans or children that are intoxicated with lead stay little, they don't grow as much. Well, here it's interesting that when you make a circuit in metal of the metal lead, the plant will react as it will at, as as it is intoxicated with lead, but they didn't. But the plant didn't absorb lead. It it is just in the in the uh, radio electromagnetic influence of the antenna in lead. So and then this gives the idea to George Lakowski to develop the the hypothesis the theory that all living organism will materialize the products in which they uh, they bought or of their environment of their close environment it's like it's like a radiation each metal each uh, product uh, that is uh, widespread around us will radiate its own frequencies and energies and then he developed the idea that the living organism will materialize the products in which he lives if you live in a plastic house maybe you 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 will be influenced by plastic frequencies <laughs> if you live in a more natural house you you like uh, made of clay and and uh, stone and and uh, like uh, old houses uh, you will uh, you will bought in more natural frequencies so it's probably a lot better a lot better and so he developed that idea now I don't have that idea that you that we materialize the the material, but uh, uh, but I believe like him that we are uh, influenced by the radiation of all materials in which we bought, and uh, the Lakovsky coil or that kind of coil will will increase the frequency inside the coil but not outside so that is why it has a very local effect when you make uh, a coil it will increase the energy or the the electromagnetic energy or of those frequencies of the material inside the coil and not outside it's like it neutralizes outside and and it increases the frequencies inside um he did so a, a lot of experiment with different metals uh but uh, the best most uh useful metal i would say was uh, copper um with other metals he could have also good results but also sometimes very bad uh, but it depends on what you want if you want to have a uh, bonsai plants then you can use a uh, lead uh, a lead circuit <laughs> but if you want uh, healthy growing plants a copper circuit is very good um he made after it uh, i will look uh, uh, 
after uh, those uh, experiments, he made a lot of uh, bracelets, uh, necklaces, and things like that, that he distributed with uh, doctors to, to patients that had cancer and to help them uh, for healing. And he also, he also developed an electronic device uh, w w with that principle. Um, like he also developed uh, bracelets and necklaces, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's not so important uh, to orient the circuit uh, with uh, opening to the north because you, you will not walk with your bracelet or your necklace with, uh, with the open ends always to the north, but it will also work. And so uh, I began to do tests on plants with other directions and I saw that it works also very good and I began to do experiments with the bracelet or, or the the coil on the on the soil or around the branch of of a tree and I saw also good effects so it's not the orientation it's not so important but we will see certain rules that we can respect to increase the effects uh, there are certain rules that really increase the effects, but uh, if you put it in other orientation, you will also have effects, but it, it will just be a little less. Um, what else? Ah, yeah, so when he made the device, the electronic healing device, uh, he could, in, 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 in a little book, you, you can read a lot of his testimonials on uh, people um, that had cancers. Uh, well, what is interesting is that uh, then he used uh, different metals, a combination of different metals. And why did he do that? Because his idea or, or hypothesis of the working principle of uh, the circuit is that um, it creates um, it creates like a kind of radio resonant frequency that will be like an antenna for uh, a really a big broadband uh, frequency spectrum. So of, of, of a lot of other frequencies. And uh, he, he uh, supposed that the plants, when they are weak, they have a lack of certain frequencies. It's like they have holes in their broadband normal frequency spectrum. And then they will be like nourished by the frequencies uh, send it out by the circuit. And so then it gives him the idea to use a lot of different metals because each metal will bring certain frequencies uh, to, to the circuit. And then to even increase uh, the effect, he decided to make an electronic uh, part, an electronic generator, an electrical generator that uh, discharge a uh, very high of voltage uh, spikes on it. And then it creates uh, even that, then it becomes even more powerful. Um, an example, if you want to heal a plant or help uh, to increase the energy of a plant, you would need to put a circuit like uh, weeks and weeks or days around the plant. Or even if you want to increase your own health or well-being, you would need to put uh, the, the bracelet or the necklace or the belt uh, like uh, weeks uh, and, and wearing it uh, every day, a few hours or the whole day uh, to see uh, to see the effects. Well, when he made his electronic uh, device, he could have really uh, big effects already with 20 minutes uh, a day, like three or five five treatments a week, and and he could after one or two weeks heal uh, really big uh, health problems. Uh, so. It's a lot more powerful with some uh, stimulation of uh, high voltage. That makes then a, a device uh, to make it 
very happy. Huh? You can find that in his old books, how he did, and he had also patterns about this. And this helps also, I did test with that kind of, of uh, devices on germination of plants, and it really, it, it, it is also very powerful. Huh? It works very well. So we continue. So other examples from uh, from museum uh, that we can find, uh, you see uh, all kind of, of uh, bracelets like this. Um, they call it uh, Torx. When you look on internet or in museum, uh, they call it uh, Torx, T-O-R-C-S. Uh, so uh, that's, for example, uh, an image from, I think, the British Museum in, in London, uh, where we find this. Here are other uh, examples. Mm. So it's almost the same, huh? but... Uh, so you see uh, the, the spiral on top. Well, that's also close to the spiral spirals that make a, a big buzz now on the internet <laughs> of people uh, wrapping a spiral around the stick. Well, uh, it has also certain effects. Huh? Um, so it can also in that way have certain effects. Now the difference with a coil with uh, different loops and a coil with only one loop is that when you have only one loop, it doesn't have it doesn't have a direction of the magnetic field and when you have a different loops it creates a direction and so if you put a coil with different loops then we don't call it anymore a lakovsky coil then it is a, a normal coil um, uh, because it works a little bit differently and then uh, in one in one direction the magnetic field will go in one way. And if you put the, the coil in the other direction, like clockwise or anti-clockwise, it will uh, push the magnetic energy the other way. And so in one way, it will maybe stimulate growth and in the other way, inhibit growth. So that, that's why we see in testimonials uh, sometimes very good results and sometimes uh, no result at all or even bad results. And it's difficult to understand or to know uh, because we don't have measurement devices to know uh, what is the need of the plant on a certain moment if he needs uh, better in, in one direction or the other direction. So uh, to, to avoid that problem, it's more easy to make one in, in, in one loop to make a Lakovsky coil. That's why I don't really use the technique with uh, a coil like this around the stick, for example, because then you don't know the direction uh, that, is, that is better. In, in springtime, it will be different because the energy goes up more and in the autumn, the energy goes down. So, uh, uh, so you, 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 you need also to respect the natural way of growing of the plants uh, if you want to have good results. That is, for example, a patent, an image from a patent of Lakovsky of 1927. And you see a, a coil with even uh, another uh, coil around it. Huh? So it's like um, it's like you would have a stick, uh, but uh, a stick that is uh, uh, banded in a bracelet uh, in a circular form, and then above it, around it, uh, he even a coil even more with another wire around and this can also increase the effect but that's more work to do eh? but already with just a simple bracelet you have already a good effects but you can even increase the effect by doing like this um you see a lot of uh uh, titles of articles he had in uh, the Academy of Sciences of France. So it was really 
official signs in that time huh? so between world war one world war two uh in 1925 27 28 29 it was really official signs but after world war two it it was like it disappeared and they didn't talk about it anymore that's uh, on the left you see another image and this is um, a coil or a, a bracelet but uh, in a bigger format it was like as big as a um, as a man like uh, one meter 50 or two meter high and this is an idea of uh, justin christophe Lowe to use it like this it's to make like a bracelet or an open loop in a in a vertical in a vertical position and then he said that the energy was increased at the north side uh, he put the the face uh, uh, face to face to the south and the north and then um uh, he said that to the south it didn't have effect, but that the energy uh, will, the vital energy, he called it the, the vital energy. So it's like the organ energy or the vital force uh, of all living organisms will be increased at the north side. It's interesting to know that George Lakowski lived at the same time as Justin Christophe Lowe in France. Justin Christophe Lowe, he lived close to Paris in a town, Que Les Yvelines. And uh, George Lakowski, he worked also in Paris. So maybe they knew each other, maybe not. Difficult to know. I never saw um, uh, an article uh, about the, the, the two together, but. Um, they worked on the same um, energies, I would say, or the same uh, knowledge in a certain way. Uh, Christophe Lowe, he, he was working on plants and uh, George Lakowski did experiments on plants, but his uh, working goal was more uh, to heal people, to help uh, people in hospitals. And uh, so that idea of Justin Christophe Lowe, I developed also with the Lakowski coil, and uh, that gives me the idea to put the Lakowski coil around the branches of trees, for example, and to put it on the on a, on a branch that is going to south, and so the the tree trunk is on the north side, and so uh, to help the tree like this, and this works really very good. I, I tested it already. Uh, since uh, several years and it works quite good and it's it's uh, very easy to do like this you you don't need to put it on an angle with the opening to the north no you just put it around the branch like you have a bracelet around your arm or your 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 wrist and you put the opening uh just to 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 the to to the lower part huh? to like this but even if you put the opening at the other uh, sides, it will work too. Uh, but uh, I think it just uh, to make it easy. Um, but maybe it worked better with the opening uh, to the earth. Um, it makes us also think about uh, door openings. When you have a door of temples or churches or even old houses, may, uh, sometimes the the door um, opening is made of a certain stone that is different of the stone of the houses and so this creates also like a circuit uh, and it creates also an energy field like this uh, so that's very interesting to notice in uh, in electronics we speak about a, a, a dipole or a dipole um so it's uh when you made a straight line it's like a dipole uh, like uh, used in radio circuits but when you make a loop it creates like a, a radio circuit in the loop and then it will influence the energy only inside the loop uh, like i told so that is really electromagnetic uh theory and knowledge uh, uh, there's nothing new age about this uh, this is really very 
uh, very scientific in a certain way. Yeah? But in a certain way, a lot of science, scientific people doesn't believe in it because they think it's so weak frequencies that it will have no effect. But like we saw in electroculture, uh, it's not about the intensity of the frequencies that is uh, most important. It's more the quality and to be on the right uh, frequencies and the right tune. And so here we will really attract or increase the natural frequencies. So it's only good. Huh? It's uh, and and that's what we see on the plants. Uh, it's, it's 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 the results that counts in my eyes. So and. Uh, like we see very good results. It's uh, very interesting. Even today, sometimes people uh, tell that maybe with the electro pollution of today that was not there uh, a century ago or 50 years ago, um, uh, maybe it will not work today. Well, uh, it works also today. Yeah? It's not because there is electro pollution that it doesn't work. It's, I would say, even that. Uh, it works maybe even better in the way that with the electro pollution, all living organisms are like stressed with this. And when we will increase the natural energies with those kind of circuits, it will really uh, relieve the stress and will make that the plants can grow again quite normally. Huh? It's like they grow again normally. Huh? Uh, uh, because it's not normal that a lot of plants become sick uh, today, uh, and that is and that we see this as a normal situation. No, uh, the normal situation is that all plants and living organisms are healthy, and that sickness is only an exceptional um, uh, an, ex an, an exceptional rare situation. Well, with uh, Lakovsky coils it will help to get again uh, a normal growth of the plants in a certain way. So that, that's an example of coils I make uh, of, of bracelets uh, with, with just a copper wire that is wrapped around each other. Uh, uh, quite uh, nice uh, bracelets and I make also in silver. And I make also big ones. And those big ones I use for the plants with very good results. Um, the big ones I also choose to use uh, the sacred qubit, the other uh, or, 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 or the royal qubit length. And this is also inspired from Slim Sperling's work. Uh, uh, for the one that knows about Slim Sperling, uh, he has written a book, it's a dowser from uh, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, he died a few years ago, and he he did experiments also with Lakovsky coils and and uh, and more. And one of his first experiments was to use Lakovsky coils in the size of the royal qubit, and then he saw huge results. And uh, and so I did this. I did this uh, by reading his book and. And uh, I tested this and we will see some results. It's really working very well. With those circuits, I have almost always very good results. But you can also make it more simple with just a copper wire. And it's also very good. Huh? Uh, it's the most simple way to do it with a copper wire like this. But if you, if you can wrap it to, uh, together and optimize it with the size, it's even better. And at the end, you'll see at the end of the loops, I put a, a beech wood uh, pearls. So, and uh, uh, the idea behind it is to combine to combine wood with the copper. And uh, beech wood with copper is a, a it's a kind of energetic combination that I found to be very powerful too. So, like this, we have like three effects in one. We have the, the uh, harmonizing effect of the combination of beech wood with uh, copper. We have the increased effect of the size of the royal qubit. And we have the, the effect of the Lakovsky coil uh, uh, in copper. So it's a, a three, uh, it's an optimization, we could say. 
I make also belts like this uh, uh, with uh, copper wire, uh, with um, uh, so, and this is very uh, useful uh, for humans, but also uh, like, for example, if you want to energize the water or uh, your bottle of wine or your fruit or your vegetables in the kitchen, um, or your um, your uh, your water your water bucket in the garden. You you can uh, put a belt like this around, and uh, this works also very good. Huh? So very interesting. You can make this big and little. You can make this as little as a bracelet, for example, or even more little. Or you can uh, make it uh, very big, uh, like uh, meters, uh, uh, and put around a huge tank or uh, or your seat, your seat uh, silo uh, for the farmers to energize the seats, for example, or your water tank, or your spray tank. Uh, so uh, uh, it's very interesting. Huh? Um, yeah. Ah, here are examples. On the bottom left, you see two pots with a leak, where I see that leak, and you see that uh, the leaves are a lot bigger on the left with the circuit that I just put on the soil like this. And uh, so I, I, I see that those two pots the same way, and one I put uh, the circuit just on the soil, uh, on, on the, on the, like you see. And on the white, and not, and you see huge difference. Uh, on the white, uh, I did the same with um, with the broccoli plants, and you see also huge difference. Uh, so it's it's very uh, powerful. Uh, it works very well. Uh, we saw also very good results with this on uh, fruit trees. For example, I had testimonials of fruit trees that were full of aphids, like uh, apple trees. And uh, people uh, put um, a Lakovsky coils around, and in a few days, there were almost no aphids anymore uh, on the tree. Uh, also, against uh, against uh, frost stress or or to increase the uh, frost resistance in springtime. Well, I had a, a testimonial like this of a, of a gardener in the nearby village. And she put uh, around some apple trees, uh, Lakovsky coils, and the other not. It was a few years ago. Uh, they were blossoming, and then there was a frost. Well, all the trees with the Lakovsky coil, they had apples afterwards. She yielded apples, and all the trees without, they, she didn't have had any apple because all the flowers uh, were had 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 freezes and 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 uh, there were no apples so it can make a huge difference between having a yield or having no yield uh, because uh, the circuit will help to increase the energy of the plant that will make it more resistant to disease or the disease will just not appear because it's not their environment or uh, it will increase their resistance against uh, stress, like a drought, like frost, like uh, excessive heat, uh, like um, uh, any kind of stress you can have uh, around the plants. Huh? So it can. So it it it's not an effect like uh, there is a uh, an, an aphid and it will kill the aphid or something. No, it's not an effect. Uh, uh against a disease no it's just an effect that we will increase the energy we and it will create a positive environment for health and so the diseases the pest will disappear by themselves they will just go away to more weaker plants or the 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 or their um, or their uh, or other animals or other insects or uh, the birds will clean it up uh, um, it will create a more a positive uh, healthy situation 
also against uh, uh, radioactive uh, pollution. Uh, why I tell this, why I'm so convinced about this, is because when you, you read the book about George Lakowski and his uh, effects uh, to heal uh, cancer patients, well, uh, more than 90% of his cancer patients were, were healed by his devices. And when you look at uh, the cancer patients he, he received from uh, the other doctors, there were uh, the patients that were already treated with a kind of chemotherapy of the 1930s and 40s, and also, uh, or they were treated with radiation therapy. And uh, like you know, radiation therapy is like you, you, uh, you are, uh, it's like uh, the same uh, secondary effects of uh, radioactive uh, pollution or radioactive uh, um, uh, radiation uh, during a nuclear war or, or nuclear pollution or, or catastrophes like in Chernobyl, for example. Well, uh, when we look at the effects also of electropollution, at high doses, it's very similar. It's also kind of radiation with the same effects. You lose a vital energy, you become tired, uh, your immune system uh, become uh, bankrupt, and, uh, and you become sick of anything, well, what you get, uh, well, what you meet, and, uh, and, uh, and you don't have energy anymore. Well, it's, it's, the, it's quietly the same, electropollution, or radioactive pollution, it's almost the same. Uh, it's not uh, very different. And um, so, um, and what is really amazing that nobody noticed uh, before uh, that I know about is that when you read that book, you see that all the people that had cancer healed of their cancer, but they healed also of all the secondary effects of the radioactive uh, treatments of the of the radiotherapy. So that is very interesting. And that goes in the same direction of another guy. Um, uh, uh, the, the, there is one professor that discovered that too uh, from, uh, from Greece. Uh, it's Dr. Papas, and he discovered even more about Lakovsky uh, therapy devices is that it stimulates um, uh, transmutation processes. And that it's, and so uh, that's, that's uh, maybe also one way it stimulates uh, the healing uh, process. Uh, because if, if uh, a plant or a soil is uh, polluted, with uh, molecules or atoms that uh, has not to be there with bad frequencies, well, the, the, the Lakovsky coils or the, the Lakovsky therapy will help to transform it to neutral molecules or other atoms that are not, uh, that are healthy, huh? that, that, that doesn't make harm. So very interesting. I think there is really a lot to discover there and a lot to uh, apply. Uh, this, this can really make a huge difference uh, uh, in, in, in our times uh, where we are like polluted from uh, everywhere. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have solutions uh, or possible solutions with that kind of uh, techniques. Uh. So here you see uh, some drawings, how you can install those Lakovsky coils. You can put around the, the roots of the tree. Uh, when you plant a, a fruit tree, for example, you can just put around the roots. It works. I think when I see the results I have in my garden that it works less good than above the soil, but it works also. And uh, you can put it just on the soil, on the bottom, around the trunk or around the plant. Or you can put it with a stick uh, uh, to hold it at a certain angle and with, uh, with the open ends to the north, for example. Always better to put the open ends to the north, but uh, it will work also in the other directions, huh? but just uh, less good. Uh, that's what we think.
And uh, also, when you put uh, in a vertical position, like you see on the image, then you put it around the branch, for example, with the trunk of the tree on the north side. And this works very good. Huh? I now advise more to use it like this because it's a very easy way to use it. Uh, and, uh, and then it stays a long time around your tree. It doesn't... Uh, um annoy you when you work in the garden because when you put it on the bottom sometimes when you take your lawn mower or mower or grass mower maybe or your dog will play with it or whatever or your children and so it it will disappear and will be all around the nature but when you put it around the branch or in the soil on around the tree, uh, then uh, then it's it's one sense for all. It's installed and it will work, and and it doesn't uh, uh, change. Uh, it doesn't move anymore over the years. So that's a way you can use it. Here, examples in my garden with just a normal copper wire. Um, well, we have observed also that the color can can change also uh, the effect, and in that way, uh, for the most positive effect, you can use uh, different colors together. Now, from the beginning, um, I did always with the with the copper uh, red color of the of the red electrical wires uh, that I find easily. And I had quite good results with this. But one day, I uh, there was one year, a few years ago, I had two apple trees that were in bad shape. And one, I put a red color wire. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the red plastic insulation that make it red. And uh, at the other tree, I put a blue uh, wire with a blue uh, plastic insulation. And what I what, what I observed is that with the blue wire, the the tree made a lot of vegetative growth, and with the red, the tree made a lot more flowers and fruit, but less vegetative growth. But in the two cases, their health was really uh, a lot increased. There were uh, a lot less disease or no disease at all. Uh, and they, they become again uh, more healthy. Um, so that's very interesting huh? that the color has uh, also a huge influence. It's quite logic huh? because color is you have the, the electromagnetic frequencies of light. Light is an electromagnetic frequency. And when you see a color is because it filters the light. Uh, it's when the material absorbs all, all colors of the white light and reflects only one color, like red, then you see red to your eye. If you see blue, it's that the material absorbs all the colors, but uh, only uh, send back blue, for example. So uh, it's also interesting to understand this. Um, in that way, it can make us think. It can also... Uh, it's an idea I have to develop um, in uh, electroculture is that every color is a frequency. And there are like, for example, there are insects that doesn't like certain colors and that even are repelled by certain colors. And then you can use, uh, I know that certain insects doesn't like yellow, for example, and other insects will be attracted by that color. And so you can use, for example, plants or flowers to grow close to other plants that, uh, and, and to, to use the colors to protect the plant against certain insects. Uh, but that is uh, a whole new domain to explore and, and to discover. But I'm sure we will discover a lot of things just by observing the colors in nature and the influence the plants have on each other also with the colors because colors it's uh, electromagnetic uh, frequencies huh? we don't have to forget this huh? it's also electroculture in a certain way 
Uh, the effect of the colors corresponds also with the effects we find in uh, grow lights uh, in greenhouses or for inside uh, cultivation. Uh, you have uh, light uh, with more blue light inside that will stimulate vegetative growth. And then you have lights with more red light inside, uh, red frequencies that will increase uh, flowering. So it's, it's something that is very well known in, uh, in the growing um, industry and uh, in uh, science uh, about the influence of the colors. Also, when you use a net, against insects around your plants or uh, in your greenhouse or, or 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 against hail well one it will be of a certain color it has been observed that it will increase uh, vegetative growth and have less uh, flowers so if you put uh, for example a blue color net around your apple tree against hail uh, then the tree is growing, but you don't have flowers and fruit, so it's not a solution too. <laughs> so uh, that's all things we can um, pay attention to if if you if we know about this, huh? and, and it can make a huge difference. The 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 best is to use all colors or to use, uh, for example, the two colors, the red and the blue. And then you have uh, a complementary effect. Huh? Uh, so that's uh, that's what I would, if you have uh, colors, it's to combine red and blue uh, or to use no color at all, like uh, pure copper, for example, like my first uh, uh, the coils I showed uh, just before uh, our example of the that was from a friend uh, that has uh, huge, huge big leaves of dandelion uh, with a Lakowski spiral a Lakowski coil of different colors like you see uh, mostly red and blue uh, uh, so uh, I don't know in Canada, but uh, here in our region, it's really a dandelion year. There are a lot of dandelions everywhere this year. It's amazing to see that. Um, I combined also that technique of the Lakowski coil around the magnetic, uh, the earth magnetic antenna technique. Uh, to see if I could improve the earth magnetic antenna and I observed that it, it even improved it. The idea was to see how I could um, radiate or increase the area of influence of the earth magnetic antenna. And with the idea of Justin Christoflo of putting the, the Lakowski coil um, in the vertical position, uh, and that it will increase the energy on the north side, uh, it gives me the idea to put it around the earth magnetic antenna that is always directed uh, south to north. So, uh, and it's a perfect combination. It uh, increased a lot of the effects. Uh, I saw huge results. And so now, since that time, a few years ago, I observed this, uh, I put now always a Lakowski coil around my earth magnetic antennas to even increase the effects. You can also put uh, like a huge Lakowski coil on the south side of your room, for example, on the wall, and then it will increase the vital force energy to the north and, and will like uh, spread over your wall room like this. Uh, it can be also interesting to do that. So that's an idea of doing it on uh, large fields. Huh? Uh, then you can put a wire or like a fence wire, uh, like an electrical fence wire all around the field and then put electrical discharge on it. But then you, you if you want to have the Lakowski effect or the open uh, bracelet effect, you need to, to let the fence open and then just put electrical discharge on it of high voltage. And this works very well. I did, uh, I observed this by uh, kind of by accident on my, on the prairie of uh, my horse, where the grass is really always growing uh, since uh, I, I've put the fence like this. 
uh, because my fans, I had like, um, how to say that, uh, um, a little barn where my, my horse can go on the border of my uh, prairie. And so the, the fence was in an open loop. And, and then I observed that the grass was really growing better than on the, um, on the prairies around where there was no fence. <laughs> so, uh, and even when the grass is very little, my horse is always uh, grazing the grass. <laughs> it's uh, uh, really in interesting. Um, and so that's a quite easy way to make it um, on big areas uh, to stimulate growth in a kind of an, uh, a little bit electrical, but also a natural way and to increase growth in, in big areas of hectares uh, can be interesting. So I'm developing uh, a device to, to do it like this uh, also to increase even the effect. On beehives, uh, since uh, one or two years now, we are in 2023, I put a uh, Lakovsky coil now on the south side also. And it seems to work also very well on the beehives like this. And so the idea is to increase the vital force to the north. So uh, to put the, the beehive on the north of the, of, of that Lakovsky coil. Huh? I put also a magnet on the south and north of the beehive. If your beehive is oriented in another position, uh, you can also do it. Huh? You put it just on the, on the south wall of your beehive or the most south wall, it can be southeast or southwest, uh, but uh, you, you put it where the most south side and uh, it will also have effects. Uh. And uh, you can also even put a pyramid on top of it, uh, but that's something to experiment. I didn't experiment this for the moment, uh, the pyramid on the top of the beehive, but I know beekeepers in Spain that did this uh, with uh, quite good results. And a beekeeper in France too, that experimented this with uh, quite good results too. So continue. Oh, there's a lot to, to see because <laughs> there are still all the other uh, antennas to see. So here, an evolution of the Lakovsky coil at the size of the royal qubit. Well, you can make the Lakovsky coils also on other sizes. Huh? It's not a problem. But it works very well on the size of the royal qubit that is 52.5 centimeters or more precisely 52.36 centimeters. And in, uh, in inches, it's, it's uh, also widened in, the, um, in that patent of uh, a spurling that uh, what, he, what he did, it's another system. He put the, like, he take the Lakovsky coil and then he welded together to make a, a close and then he saw that the closed loop, when it respects certain sizes, like uh, the, the royal qubit size, that it, it becomes also very powerful, very interesting. But it doesn't work at other sizes or less. It, it works also a little bit, but less. And so uh, he, he made then uh, coils like this with two wires wrapped around each other, also important in his, um, in his technique. He used uh, two copper wires wrapped around each other because he observed that when he make a close loop, if it's a, a single wire, then it has a positive effect at one side and a negative effect at the other side. And when he make a double wire uh, that is wrapped around each other, then it has a positive effect at the two sides of the wire. So that's why he made it like this. And it's kind of a new invention then that he called the the uh, that we call the 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 spurling ring or the slim spurling ring or the royal qubit uh, ring. Um, so that is an, an invention of uh, 
of Sperling. Now there are a lot of people doing that kind of stuff since uh, he died. Um, and it's quite interesting. Huh? I had some uh, uh, people around uh, in the electroculture world that uh, tested it with quite good results too. Huh? So we can continue. That is the other technique of the copper beechwood copper harmonizer or copper beechwood harmonizer. The idea behind it comes from the work of Victor Schauberger, that was um, uh, 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 that was an Austrian engineer in the 40s, in the 30s, 40s, 50s. And he did a lot of research about uh, vital force, living energies of water uh, and trees and uh, living organisms and fertility. And he discovered that when you use iron tools in the garden, when you move, um, I would say moving iron tools, because it's different with a static um iron stick that is that doesn't move that will that have uh, that can have positive effects like we see in electroculture huh? so iron is not bad in itself but when you move iron tools he discovered that it takes vital energy from the soil it disturbs the fertility of the soil and then he discovered that when you use uh, copper tools in place of iron tools that you don't lose that uh, uh, vital force of the soil. And it could have a difference of like 30% of yield just by using uh, copper tools in, instead of uh, iron tools. And then uh, there was a Holland uh, farmer, uh, so uh, a farmer from the, from the Netherlands, that I met uh, one day during a presentation. Uh, he was a dowser too, and he discovered that you could neutralize the bad effects of the iron tools with a copper beechwood harmonizer. Uh, because why did he did why did he that research? It's because or that discovery is because he was looking for a system to continue to use his iron tools, but without the bad effects of the iron tools. And uh, because when you have to replace your tools to, with copper tools, it's a lot more expensive. Huh? If you want a spade or, or a tool in copper, it's like uh, 10 times more expensive than in iron. So uh, when you are a farmer, and you need uh, big tools, uh, it's a huge uh, investment. And then uh, he discovered that when you use uh, little copper tubes, like you see on the image, uh, and you uh, fill it with the beech wood, that, and you connect it in connection to the iron tool, that it neutralizes that bad energy. And he did a lot of tests with this, with uh, quite good results. I did also, and it's, it's quite amazing. Uh, it, it, it seems to work. And um, when you, when you, uh, and there is even a, a farmer in, in Canada that, uh, that bought me uh, harmonizers like this a few years ago, and that did a test, a comparison test uh, between uh, uh, different fields, and he confirmed it to me that it worked well also. Uh, it, it was a guy in, in Quebec. And um, uh, what is interesting is that if you look at the colors, when you take copper, uh, it's kind of brown, orange, red color when it's uh, nude. And when it oxidizes, it becomes black and even bluish, greenish when it oxidizes. And when you look at the sky, or the earth, so the earth is more brown, and when it's a sunny sky, it's bluish, or you can have gray clouds too. It's great. So it's like the energy when it oxidizes comes from the earth to the sky. 
And when you look at iron, it's exactly the opposite. When it's nude, it's uh, like grayish, bluish. And when it oxidizes, it becomes uh, reddish, like uh, rust. So it's, it's, it's like it's the energy from the sky to the earth. Very interesting because uh, you have also the effect or the, 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 the symbol that the sky, it's more, uh, it's more masculine, masculine and the earth is more uh, feminine, feminine. And you have also the, the book of, of maybe you know about this in psychology, uh, the, the man come from Mars and the woman from Venus. <laughs> It's uh, also funny. So the 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 energies are like very complementary. Huh? Uh, very interesting. Uh, you have also the planet Mars is uh, in symbolic. It's uh, iron, and the planet Venus it's symbolic. It's uh, copper, and the planet Earth symbols uh, zinc. Uh, so it's also interesting to see that those three metals. And zinc is very important for fertility too. Huh? Uh, it's not in that harmonizer, but it can be interesting to explore some, some about this. Um, so in, in a lot of elect electroculture antennas of uh, Justin Christophe Lowe, for example, we find those three metals back, zinc, uh, iron, and copper also. Interesting. So examples how to fix it, you can just fix it on the wood close to the iron uh, and the wood will conduct that energy to the iron. It, it, uh, it works fine like this too. Um, the size of the copper beech wood harmonizer is not important. It can be very little and it works. It's uh, really energetic. It's uh, very strange how it works but it works, uh, it looks to work. Uh, uh, when you do energetic uh, testing or muscle testing, you can really see a huge difference also with it. But you, you can also find uh, copper tools uh, on the market. Uh, the, the most nice and the uh, inventors of those kind of copper tools is an Aust Austrian company. Uh, in Austria, in, in Europe, that makes very nice tools that you can buy, but there are also other companies now uh, doing uh, such kind of tools that you can uh, buy through internet all over the world. And maybe there will be new ones in the future, probably. When you work with those copper tools, I assure you, uh, I bought uh, several ones, uh, and when you work with them, you feel really the difference in comparison with the iron tools. When you begin to work with those little shovels and, and, uh, and tools, uh, you don't want anymore to use iron tools, because it's like with the iron tools, you feel that it loses your energy, that it's more hard work, that you that you are more tired after the work or even during the work, it's like more work. And when you use the copper tools, it's like everything is easy. It's uh, it's really it's it's really a lot more pleasure to working with it. There there is really an an energetic effect also on our on our um, on, on, on our per perception and on, on our own energy when we work with it. And uh, I assure you, it's a huge difference. All people that work with them uh, uh, observe this and, and see this uh, effect. But like it's expensive, uh, mostly we buy one for our birthday, for example, and then another one the next year, <laughs> and another one the next year, because it's quite expensive. That's the problem. Um, so now we will look at the uh, Luigi Igina spirals. Very, very interesting uh, technique too. It's a, it's, it's a different kind of energies of those other spirals that we saw uh, until now. Uh, uh, so we can combine all those techniques together also. Uh, uh, here, the Igina spirals, um, 
it's a it's a more it's not very scientific you you don't have really a scientific explanation of that kind of spirals it's really ah, i speak about official science science huh? but or not uh at, at this moment uh but uh, luigi igina was really an amazing uh inventor and he shows with his results that what he invented uh, was really working. Uh, he worked always with a lot of different, uh, of always with spirals in all his machines. And he could make uh, free energy, free electricity. He could make uh, anti-gravity. He could make, uh, he could influence the Rather, he could uh, make rain in half an hour or uh, make a sunny weather, even if, if it was a cloudy sky. And he made his machines running uh, with his spirals. He could make a, a sunny sky or a hole in the sky uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes, uh, in half an hour. He was, he knew really about how was working uh, the subtle energies or the ether forces or, or how you can call it uh, in our environment uh, and how nature works he, he really discovered amazing things and he said that it would take uh, uh, maybe more than 50 years until the people will understand what he really was doing uh, 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 because he was really far ahead on his time like uh, it was like an, a kind of Nikola Tesla of his time uh, of our 20th century too uh, for me in my eyes Luigi Gina was even a bigger genius inventor than Nikola Tesla uh, why I say this because his inventions are even more simple but we don't understand until now because we we uh, it 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 uses a lot of different concepts as as uh, as we know huh? even the the techniques of nikola tesla uses kind of different concepts uh, but quite similar to the theories of electricity and electronics of today but igina's work doesn't use at all the concepts of uh, uh, of the the scientific theory of electricity of today, but but they work. So uh, it shows that the reality is even different as the concepts we learn at school. Uh, and the force of Igina is that he didn't went at uh, engineering schools about electricity. So he didn't was he was not polluted with the theories you learn at school. So he he looked at electricity and the energies in a whole new way just by observing nature. And he in, discovered all this just by observing nature. So that's a, a whole different way of learning and discovering. It's like. Uh, you go to nature to learn it's not like you go to school you learn things uh, uh, and then you go to nature and you explain how it works and but uh, uh, the reality is when nature learns it to you it's not when you learn it at school <laughs> uh, what you learn at school it's just uh, yes, it's just all hypothesis of scientific people uh, that may be, maybe work 90% of their time at their desk with, with just a, a plant in a pot on, the, on their window <laughs> uh, of nature. And it's not like uh, they observe 90% of their time. What really happens in nature is different. Huh? <laughs> So we will look at this and you see with all the spirals above your head, you become very smiley. <laughs> That's very funny. So the theory of uh, Luigi Igina is that you have a kind of energy coming from the sun or from the cosmos, 
going to the earth and that energy is like uh, in a, a sp uh, in uh, moves in spiral in in, in 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 spirals like this and when it goes uh, in the center of the earth it's like reflected like a mirror and it goes again to the sun also in spiraling it's the same energy that just uh, being reflected and it changes of color the the energy from the sun he says it, it comes in a, in a, in yellow so the sun normally is yellow and the energy from the earth to the cosmos when you look at the earth from the cosmos it's bluish it's blue that's why we call it the blue earth and um, and when you you mix blue and yellow what the, what do you get green and so he says that the green the plants are like the materialization of the those two energies you need those two energies to create a matter to create a reality in which we live it's like a fusion of those two energies but that energies go that energy he said goes through everything you 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 cannot uh, isolate that energy but you need antennas to capture this energy and like to slow it down or to transform it to energy that is used that can be used to, uh, uh, or that can be um accumulated or used by the plants or the living organism and that's why also the plants uh, grow in spiraling uh, or like uh, everything you see spirals everywhere in nature because spirals or like um have an antenna effect to collect that energy so it's a whole other viewpoint of the electrical theory of a coil uh, uh, that that collects uh, electrical energy and creates a magnetic field and everything that that's the electrical viewpoint but here with egina we don't speak about that he speaks about a kind of energy that goes through everything and that has to be collected by spirals to be able to be transformed and to be used by the plants and living organism and to 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 grow and to create a, and to create a matter and he showed that an experiment he made experiments with a lot of uh, uh, spirals in a in a cone uh, form like you see on the on the on the image uh, like a, a cone like this in a spiral and he says that when he put a lot of them together um, and he connected to a wire then he showed that uh, there is electricity coming out like uh, electrons coming out from nowhere it's like it materializes electrons it's like it creates um matter it creates electricity from nowhere and that is very very interesting uh, he observed that the energy flow is always flowing in clockwise uh, direction so uh, it's like you have um, a snail shell when you look at the snail shell uh, here i have one uh, you will see that from the center to the outside it's always clockwise always clockwise and so he he discovered uh this and uh, and then he made uh, uh, as an example to the snail shells he made uh, spirals with aluminium wire uh, it will work also with other metals but uh, he luigi gina itself himself he used always aluminium wires uh, of, of 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 what i know about him it was always aluminium wire that's very interesting because it's quite cheap aluminium wire it's more cheaper than uh, copper wires or iron wires but you can use uh, in some countries sometimes other metals are cheaper it depends 
Uh, so you can use um, uh, in copper, in aluminium, in zinc, in iron. Uh, I saw already very good results in copper. I, I made a lot of uh, spirals like this in copper and uh, with very good results, uh, but also in aluminium wire. Uh, why he used also aluminium wire is because uh, aluminium has a kind of storage um, a capacity of that energy, like a battery, like a battery, and that can also be interesting. That that doesn't have uh, other other um, uh, metals, huh? uh, so um, so it's like the energy is stored and it's radiated back to the environment when when the environment uh, needed uh, or when the energy is less there an example probably during the day i just uh, um, um, it's just a hypothesis i i'm telling you but probably during the day you will have more cosmic energy than during the night because uh, because the radiation of the sun is not there during the day. Uh, an example, well, then probably those uh, aluminium or storage capacity will radiate, continue to radiate uh, the energy in a certain way. He observed also with snails, by experimenting with uh, 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 snail shells, he put in aquariums, with a light bulb on top of on the aquarium and other aquarium on the side, other aquarium on the bottom. And then he observed that the snail shells at uh, the snails will orient their snail shell in the direction of the, the light source, like, like to collect the energy. So that's very interesting too. Um, uh, he proved it like this, uh, that, that it's that they were really antennas yeah so this gives the idea to make like uh, floaters for example uh, that's not a uh, igina uh, thing eh? but uh, uh, people had the idea um, to make uh, floaters with spirals like this uh, to energize the water and this seems to work very well uh, it's quite you see it's very very easy eh? you make just you take a wire, copper or aluminium or iron, and you you uh, wrap it in a in a cone uh, form, and you connect uh, the wire. Just uh, touches uh, the water, and it will work. Huh? Um, or it can be even in the water. It, it can be even in the earth or above the earth. So you can combine it also with atmospheric antennas. You can combine it with the earth magnetic antenna if you want, or with uh, or in the water, because the the energy goes through everything, even through the earth. So you can put those spirals everywhere you want. It will collect and radiate that energy. And so. Uh, I did an experiment with my daughter. That's my daughter that really discovered this. Uh, she is now eight years old. It was like two years ago or three years ago. She was like five or six years old. And uh, we put, we took uh, two buckets and uh, we put a hot poles of of the of the of the pound uh, in the buckets and uh, one we put the uh, spirals inside and the other and after uh, after like two weeks we observed that the tadpoles with the spirals uh, grew a lot faster and they had already their their first uh, legs uh, a lot before the other of the control uh, bucket. And that's uh, I did this experiment uh, two times in a row to 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 look, and uh, it really worked very well. Huh? So that's something you can do quite easily if you have uh, that pulse in your pound uh, today. Uh, you can uh, uh, do that. You you put you take two buckets. You put some spirals like this, and you observe. You will see uh, really amazing results. 
you put the buckets in the shadow in the shadow not in the uh, not too much in in the sun because they don't like that <laughs> but uh, you will see it it works very well um also i did this test with uh, with two water bottles you will see that uh, the water and i connect connected with the spirals of one bottle you will see that the water will stay uh, clear crystal clear a lot longer than the the other uh, control uh, bottle or control bucket um uh, so it's uh, uh, you see it very well then it gives the ID, like you see, uh, the, the really first experiment uh, on plants was not really from Luigi Gina, because Luigi Gina, he didn't really experiment it on plants, or not of what I know. Uh, but he experimented more on the weather, on electricity, on humans, uh, to, to help our energy also. But then uh, one Italian guy had the idea to put uh, like to to take a stick and to connect to two spirals like, like you see on the bottom right. Huh? And this is a, a very easy way to do it. Huh? Uh, you just take an iron stick or a copper stick or a tube or some uh, metal and you connect it uh, to spirals to for that it will be collected uh, uh, through the stick through the uh, to the soil close to the plant and you will see that most plants all around will grow a lot better and then this gives the idea to uh, people and myself to to make uh, molds like this in 3d print uh, to make it more easy to make spirals like this and this is a, a very easy uh, way to make spirals with a mold like this you can uh, uh, make very quickly really nice uh, spirals of different sizes. Uh, you can find those molds on my site, for example. I improved those molds um, uh, over the years uh, to make it even more easy. Uh, like now they are like hollow inside, so you can make a, a bigger wire at the end, uh, but that you see with the practice. Um, it's uh, you can also make uh, double spirals like you see on the top uh, left uh, it's like two spirals in one and that you can also see in old artistic structures or even in fences or or grids in metals uh, used uh, as fences around uh, properties uh, or uh, you, you can see that kind of forms also. So it, it was probably not, not by hazard. Huh? It, it really works uh, very good as antennas, those kind of spirals. Uh, it works a lot better than just normal coils. Huh? It, it really uh, in cones like this. Huh? The, 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 it's really inspired by snail shells. Huh? You, you look at the snail shell, and then uh, you can be sure of the direction, uh, clockwise direction, and how to do it. You have also the work of uh, Walter Russell that speaks also about this, that all energy is uh, flowing in spirals, uh, so and that you have always polarities. Uh, so it's it's uh, there are a lot of similarities, I would say, between the theories of Walter Russell and uh, Luigi Ikina. Eh? They are not completely the same. Eh? I would not say that, but um, uh, it can help to understand better how Luigi Ikina uh, ideas works eh? and how those parallels works. It can help. To improve the effect, uh, Luigi Gina used uh, yellow spirals with, uh, with the tip directed to the sun to collect the sun energy and he used the blue spirals with the tip directed to the earth to increase the earth energy. And it's always good to use the two energies. 
a spiral in two directions, like you see on the stick on the right here, with a spiral directed to the sky or the sun, and one spiral directed to the earth. If you use only one spiral in one direction, then you will increase uh, more one energy over the other. And this, this can maybe create imbalances. So it's better to always have a holistic approach and to uh, bring a, a broad spectrum of energy. Uh, so, and to have the cosmic energy as well as the earth energy, I would say. Yeah. Now, next uh, technique, it's the Fibonacci spiral. So that's something else, um, but also very interesting. In nature, we find a lot of those kind of uh, spirals, even if in our own hand, like you see on the bottom right, uh, you have a kind of spiral in clockwise direction, like the snail shell. Uh, if you look uh, in that direction to your hand, you will see a spiral clockwise. Uh, if you put your, your hand like this, uh, you will see like a snail shell. Um, it, it creates like a spiral. And uh, this spiral is not any spiral, it's also with the proportions of the golden mean. And uh, a golden mean is like uh, when you have uh, a successive different lengths, well, the, the next length will be like the golden mean multiplied by the previous length. If I'm not, I don't know if, if I'm clear in what I'm telling, but uh, uh, you, you can find a, a, a kind of a rule uh, that you find in all nature. Uh, now, if you look at a kind of spiral like this, I don't know if you see me. Here, it's uh, for you, it's, um, it's clockwise direction. Ah, if, if, um, and for me, from the other side, I see anti-clockwise direction from the center to the outside. And you normally see clockwise direction because it depends what is your, what is your viewpoint, point of view or, or perspective. If you, if you change it upside down or the other way, you will see the opposite. Then you see anti-clockwise direction and I see clockwise direction. Uh, when you do muscle testing, you will see that clockwise direction is always uh, better. It's always better. If you look at it in an anti-clockwise direction, it's not so good. Uh, it, you lose energy, but in clockwise direction, you gain energy. So when you, and that you can use to put just on the soil like this, flat on the soil, and you will see that in most cases, the plants will grow better. You can also use to, to have an artistic effect on your atmospheric antennas. And it also helps to increase the energy. Um, it's also very good. It, it's, it's, it's like an antenna that will also collect uh, energies from our environment differently than the other uh, antennas and also very complementary, yeah, very nice too. So here, for example, you have a new kind of atmospheric antenna uh, that I made. This was uh, one inspired from Fibonacci spirals and uh, the Igina spirals, the double Igina spiral that I made in copper. And you see like this, and this works quite good. Uh, I put this on my rhubarb, and that uh, first year I had a rhubarb of one meter forty-five high, uh, and uh, the the previous years my maximum was around one meter twenty-five or something like this, and now it's already one meter forty-five. Uh, this year, it's around 1 meter 30, 33, 35. I have to measure it again, but it's also quite big. Uh, very good. Uh, so this can give ideas. 
So all those uh, spirals techniques helps to collect atmospheric energies, but not only, it's not only the atmospheric energies like we looked already about the Schumann frequencies, the earth magnetic field, the earth electrical field, but like we see with Luigi Igina, it's also more subtle energies that uh, science cannot measure until now, but that also really exists. Um, and uh, so it's, it's more, it's a lot more than just electricity and magnetism. It's also a lot of kind of subtle energy in which uh, in our environment that we maybe still have to discover, but that exists. And uh, like in nature, nothing is a hazard. Every form, every that's what we see also in the work of Phil Callahan is that every form, every organ, every uh, uh, hair or, or 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 organ of a plant on the leaf or, or the the branches the form of the branches every plant will act as an antenna you know, and has and has a f f function a function uh? so uh, like we have uh, just an idea I share with you but like, like we have a lot of different plants different forms of plants Probably each plant will prefer certain energy, certain frequencies uh, that will that will be related to its form. And so maybe its form can give us the idea which kind of frequencies or which kind of energy it uh, it likes to attract. Uh, uh, probably. Uh. So. Um, I don't know if you understand what I want to tell, but <laughs> but that's just an idea. Uh, I hear that was the a device I made with the idea of George Lakowski and his electronic uh, device. Uh, I put like a coil uh, uh, with electrical discharges, and I put on beans uh, on on the germination of beans, where I, I saw a lot of effects. I energize also water with it and I sprayed it on plants full of aphids. It were dahlias, uh, the flowers. And uh, after one or two weeks, there were no aphids anymore and the dahlias were growing very well. It's an example. Uh, it's like it will increase the overall energy and the disease will disappear. In my eyes, all kind of diseases sickness is just a sign of low energy in a certain way and as soon as you will increase the energy all disease just disappear so it's as simple as this uh, it cannot be more simple and so uh, all what you will do to increase the energy but i speak about uh, a vital force energy or organ energy or life energy so everything you will do to help to increase uh, uh, life energy uh, will help to diminish or reduce this disease and will help to increase health and uh, good growth and yields and the quality also. So uh, when you use a technique and use, uh, uh, for example, to increase the energy and you still have uh, aphids, for example, it's not that the technique will, is not working. It's just that maybe you didn't increase enough the energy. Maybe you need the help of other techniques also to increase the energy. Uh, uh, um, and it's not only about electroculture techniques. You have naturally also to, to know what's the best soil for your plant, what's the best environment of light, of shadow, of, of uh, humidity or just basic agricultural uh, rules also. Uh. Uh, but uh, uh, with electroculture, in my eyes, if, if, we, if, we, if we conclude or summarize this, it's really the idea is to increase life force energy. And the, and the, the best you will, uh, the, the more you use techniques to do this, you, you cannot 
give an overdosis of life force that doesn't exist you 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 are just healthy or you are even more healthy but you can not be too healthy that doesn't exist <laughs> so and with plants it's the same they they will just be uh, better if they don't need the energy if if it's with passive techniques they just will not take it they just take what they need like we when we have food we will take the best food we can what we have around us and uh, when we have enough we 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 don't eat everything we just eat what we need or we drink or eat or take what we need and not more well with the plants it's the same uh, in a, i speak about a normal situation uh. So you can combine all those techniques together because they're like working on different kind of energies. Huh? Uh, we have the atmospheric antenna, magnetic antenna, pyramid, basal, Trump towers, those Lakovsky coils, Fibonacci spirals, uh, uh, copper harmonizer, um, uh, Igina spirals uh, that are really amazing those Igina spirals also because they are so mysterious uh, how they work but uh, they really work very very well an example if you put just nail shells um, with seeds to germinate and you do a comparison test you will see that this, just only the snail shells already have uh, an antenna effect and most uh, plants will germinate faster and better like uh, sun sunflower seeds it also shows that snails maybe you see them eating your lettuce or vegetables but uh, if you um, if you uh, if you uh, destroy your snails maybe your lettuce will grow less fast because they maybe need also the energies uh, may, because the what you see uh, uh, at first uh, um, uh, at at first uh, at first sight is eat a plant but what we don't see is that the energy of the snail increases the life force and increases the growth of the plants around. So uh, you will see that the snails doesn't live in the desert. They live, they are uh, really nice growing plants. <laughs> so uh, if you want nice growing plants, you need snails <laughs> in a certain way. So because they live together and if they live together is that they need each other's energy in a certain way or influences in a certain way and it's to it's up to us to understand uh what are there and how to um to uh, organize the garden and the life that everything lives together in harmony and and in uh, in abundance um here's some books i sp i spoke about the uh, cellular oscillation from george lakovsky you have also the patents of justin christophe Lou and the patent with uh with a coil uh with the open loop very interesting patent you can find also on the internet you have the writings of luigi gina luigi gina has only uh, has not much uh writings uh but uh, there are some uh there's not much in english but i uh, there is one in our group that translated already a lot and, and very nice to him thank you very much uh to make uh, those work of luigi Gan igina known over the world because uh a few years ago his work was only known in italy and now uh, it's already more known in france and now also in the english speaking part of the world so that's very nice um and um yes that's it uh, about books about those techniques are not so much uh, a lot of george lakovsky um and uh ah, you have also the work of victor schauberger uh, uh, it's not in that list, but uh, he wrote it also books and there are many articles about Victor Schauberger, about the use of copper tools and uh, effects of iron, uh, iron tools. Um, 
also very interesting in that uh, for that presentation so thank you very much for listening uh i hope i didn't make it too long uh, <laughs> and uh but like always uh difficult to stop to talking <laughs> and sharing the the anecdotes but um so i wish you a good experimentation and uh, uh, nice uh, results and uh, and and uh, a lot of sharing of our testimonials and results to uh, to continue to build experience all together in that field thank you very much